Okay, Pokemon Masters, here's the deal. I'm in Saffron City right now, except the real world version. I'm in uh, I'm in Japan, I'm in central Tokyo. I've been traveling. If you follow me on Instagram, which you should be, um, you'll, you'll see that I've been traveling all about the places, areas that have inspired Kanto. We actually flew down to the south of Japan and went to Fukuoka, which inspired Rustboro City. Been traveling around there. We actually went into deeper rural kind of southern Japan and it, it's so clearly Hoenn. There's so much greenery out there. And I've been filming, of course, a number of video intros for really big videos that you're gonna get to see on the channel in the coming months. Over the next six months, and in the next six months in particular, are really important to this channel. Um, you'll see why soon, I'll, I'll make full announcements soon, I got stuff coming up. Uh, basically, I'm gonna be releasing some of the best videos that this channel has ever seen, and a big part of that involves these locations that I get to visit. However, of course, we have had a Pokemon Presents, um, so I do wanna talk about the one big thing that I think that we missed in the Pokemon Presents, and if you've seen the title and thumbnail, you already kind of know what that's about. Um, but before I get into that, I want to say a thank you to the sponsor, Whatnot, who you've heard a lot about on this channel already before, and I'm not going to be doing like a flashy brand deal uh, for this video. I'm going to try and keep it a little bit more organic, partly because I'm away from my normal editing facilities, but also uh, because I just want to say a heartfelt thank you to them. Without them, I would not be able to do this traveling. Like, they part-funded this trip, I would not be able to visit these locations and get to make these future videos. So a huge thank you to Whatnot. Also, while I'm out here in Japan, of course, I'm picking up exclusive Japanese uh, cards and products like uh, this guy, the Fierce Knight, Buster Blader. This is an exclusive Japanese promotion going on right now for Yu-Gi-Oh. Obviously, Worlds is going on. I'm going to try and get hold of as much uh, kind of exclusive world stuff as I can, and I will be bringing it to Whatnot to my next stream over there where I will be selling all of these items starting as low as just one pound. And stuff on my Walmart is uh, especially, it seems to go really, really cheaply. Like if you get into a bidding war with someone, you'll probably still be going away with a really good deal. So make sure you click the link in the top of the description, head on over, download Whatnot. Also, if you sign up to Whatnot, you get 10 pound free credit to your account. So if you buy some stuff off of my Whatnot at any price, it's effectively free. You just get free stuff, download, click that link. Uh, yeah, head on over, favorite my next stream, uh, which is all about Japan exclusive products. Also the stream after that, um, it's gonna be one with me and Phoebe together. Uh, and we're gonna be opening up the Cora TCG, which has some artwork in it that she's worked on, so you can get some signed cards by her as the artist. Anyway, thank you to Whatnot for sponsoring this video, sponsoring these trips. Let's talk about what you missed, I think, in the big Pokemon Presents. The big thing that I think is really, really interesting to me, and that is uh, actually the Paradox version of Cabalion. I cannot believe I'm saying that that would be interesting to me. More interesting so than the Parox Raikou, which, you know, I haven't decided if I love it or hate it at the moment, because it's the internet, we can't have nuanced opinions, we have to decide one of the polar opposites. Um, but Cabalion, of all things, Iron uh, Crown, it's called, which is a really interesting name, Iron Crown, because Cabalion was never a, a ruler, as far as we knew, it was the leader of the Swords of Justice, but why Iron Crown? Also, was I the only one to look at its design and recognize the little yellow wings on the side of its of its upper arms, I guess, or its upper legs? They're very similar to the ones on Zacian, another crowned Pokemon. Ah, Toby, I see we're getting into speculative theory territory already, but hold up a second, because the crown of Zacian is an item in the Unova games, the Relic Crown. And very legitimately in Pokemon lore, there is a lot of ties between the twin heroes of Galar, who become crowned, the twin heroes of Unova, who fight between Zekrom and Reshiram, and the twin heroes of, uh, or I guess the two brothers of Kalos, who war, um, or uh, AZ and AZ's brother. That's a whole other video that I'm working on. It's actually one of the big videos tied into my trip uh, down here. So there's a little bit of tie-in between the Galar and the Unova region. And actually, I've already done a video on exactly this topic, on, on how the kings of Galar probably came over to Unova and set up the kingdom of Unova before it was no longer a kingdom, before the kingdom fell and Unova became what it is today. But this really got me thinking, what is, hang on, what would Cabalion's relationship to Zacian be? And then I remembered, they're called the Swords of Z Justice. Cabalion, Verizion, and Trachion are the Swords of Justice, and Zacian is, of course, the sort of legendary sword Pokemon. Uh, Keldeo is also a Sword of Justice in modern day. But it does make me wonder, is it possible 
that Zacian is somehow like the trio master to the Swords of Justice, it might seem odd at first. First of all, you'll, you'll go, well, what about Zacian? Uh, what about Zamazenta? Does Zamazenta, is that a trio master to some shield group of Pokemon that we don't have yet? But this actually isn't that weird. Ho-Oh is the trio master of the legendary beasts, the other paradox set of Pokemon, and Lugia is slash isn't the trio master to the legendary birds, depending on the canon that you look at. I like to think that it is, but a lot of people say like, no, that's anime exclusive, that doesn't really count, it's only ever alluded to in the games. And just because Zamazenta isn't the leader of a legendary trio now, doesn't mean that it won't be in the future. I think this idea of the Swords of Justice coming from the original legendary sword Pokemon, Zacian, might actually be a thing, Kabalion being a sort of mini version of Zacian. But then what's more interesting about this is that this is a Paradox Pokemon. This is a future Paradox Pokemon, a version of Kabalion that may exist one day, but probably won't. It's part of the collective consciousness or dreams of people that have sort of manifested this Pokemon into reality. If that's the case, that gives us a lot of information about the kind of person that would imagine such a creature. Someone familiar with the ancient histories of the Pokemon world, who is like reflecting them into these sort of Pokemon, into these legendary Pokemon. Lots of people talk about the imagination of Professor Sana and Professor Churo. Lots of people talk about the imagination of Heath. Um, you've got to wonder though, like, is it possible that whoever went down to Area Zero, whoever's consciousness originally is responsible for manifesting these legendary Pokemon, is someone very intimately uh, familiar with legends of the Pokemon world, imagining the beasts that Raikou, Entei, and Suicune might have been before the tower burnt down, creating the paradox version that we've seen, which by the way, Entei is all but confirmed now at this point, as is Terrakion, of course, but also being familiar with, you know, yes, having future hopes and dreams for cyborg Pokemon, but also being familiar with their ancient past and how they tie into Zacian from Galar. I'm definitely interested in this. It's just a little mini thought. It's maybe the beginning of a theory. There's all the other stuff like the Unova ties with Drayton and Drayden and the bridge Pokemon Draladon. I don't think much of the Draladon evolution or the new Aplin evolution. That's besides the point. Um, and of course, there's the stuff with the photographer who looks like Animan, which why are they adding Pokemon Snap to Scarlet and Violet? Pokemon Snap is already amazing and is, you know, exists. Uh, that's besides the point. The DLC is out in a month. Teal Mask, and we've seen a new terrestrial form, a terrestrial version of Ogapon. I wonder if this version of Ogapon is going to be dragon type in this terrestrial form because its horns really remind me of the dragon that appears in Spirited Away that we see the light dragon from Zelda. There's a couple little tie ins here that I just think are interesting, and the, the dragon type may be specifically important to uh, the theory of the Arceus in its four parts that I've talked about before. Anyway, this is just a little mini video from the hotel room. I also wanted to say thank you for watching and for your support. I know videos have been slower this year. Uh, over the next six months, there's going to be a real run of videos um, that are going to be really, hopefully quite except exceptionally high quality. Um, I'm going to be revisiting a lot of big topics um, using you know, real world locations, which is something I've always wanted to do and have always, always been the most fun videos to do on this channel. Me just talking about Pokemon as if I'm really in the Pokemon world. So look out for a lot more of that. I'll be trying to add special effects and that kind of thing as well. Uh, also, a thank you to the patrons who are still here and still supporting. It really means a lot. I sound a little run down, I think, but I think largely that's just because I'm tired from a lot of traveling around Japan. So I'll try and keep you in the loop uh, with cool new theories as and when I have them, but also expect big things from these big sort of Pokemon epics that I'm going to be putting out pretty regularly. Uh, and thank you to Whatnot for making that possible. Yeah. So hi, Pokemon Masters. Hello there, it's me, Professor Oak. This video is over, so please choose another one wisely and quickly. Bye-bye. Just the biggest thank you to those of you who are supporting this channel on Patreon, and a special thank you to the big patrons of the month, Jed Rubin, Charmander Anzibal, Anthony Lee, The Elgator, and Michael Hornshoe. Thank you so much.